Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to review The Premonition, a pandemic story by Michael Lewis. This book was published in 2021 by W.W. Norton. The hardcover comes in at 320 pages. However, I read an e-copy of this book that I accessed through my local library. As the subtitle of this book suggests, this is a book all about the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And more specifically, it's about the United States' response to the virus and why so many more Americans died than were predicted predicted to and then needed to. I'm going to say this first thing right up front because I think it's really important for you to hear. I don't think the marketing of this book is entirely representative of the actual experience of reading it. That's pretty much par for the course when it comes to publishers and the way they market books. They're trying to sell copies, so of course they're going to portray this book as being a whole lot more political than it actually is. They're making it seem like it's some sort of a takedown of a specific person or a specific administration, and that person and that administration's response to the entire COVID-19 pandemic, especially in the early days. Those things are mentioned. They're a part of the story. They're important to mention. But that's not the primary focus of this book. The biggest point that Michael Lewis is trying to make in this book, apparently I'm getting to the heart of the matter right away in this review video, his biggest point is that we here in the United States didn't have the people, the agencies, the resources ready, available, in place to respond to this type of a crisis. And the things that we did have in place, you could say do have in place, only serve to hold back good people, motivated people, people with plans, people with ideas of how we should be responding to this virus, they were just held back from making a difference. There is one thought that a very important person in this book has at one point in the book, and when I read it, I knew it just perfectly summarized what this whole book is about. And that thought is, why does the United States not have the institutions it needs to save itself? Michael Lewis spends a big chunk of time in this book on setup and giving you a lot of background information. It is all fascinating stuff. You won't mind it in the slightest, but it is a lot of background information, a lot of stuff you will need to know so that you can have a more full, more comprehensive understanding of the story that he tells. And I would say the last quarter of the book. So he gives you introductions to some of the main players in the story, people who become very, very important in that last quarter of the book. He talks about what all was known about how disease is transmitted from person to person. So he does have a discussion on the differences between infectious and communicable. And he also gives a whole history of the written pandemic plan that was in place before all of this started. He also, in that setup section, gives you a really clear idea of what the U.S. public health system looks like and just how much of a glued together system it is, how disorganized everything is, but then how much faith people show in it because they don't know how disorganized it is. They think it's a whole lot, frankly, better than it actually is. He talks about the CDC and how they make decisions or how they don't make decisions and how no one really knew who was in charge of the pandemic response when we started hearing things about it in early 2020. Really, he just shows you how much bureaucracy, how much red tape was in place to hinder an effective response. I wasn't exaggerating, it is a lot of setup in this book, but I promise you, you're never gonna feel like it's taking forever to get to the point. It's all incredibly interesting stuff. Michael Lewis is a fantastic writer, more on that later, but it really is important for you to know before we even start talking about COVID-19. Just to put it in perspective, you're about halfway through the book before you even start reading about SARS. But then very shortly after that, COVID-19 does show its face and the main actors in this story get their chance to shine. Even if you don't recognize his name, I'm willing to bet that you've at least heard of another book by Michael Lewis. And not just because they're really popular and people like his books, but because a lot of them are turned into movies. So notably, there's The Big Short, Moneyball, The Blind Side, these are really big movies. I think the chances are good you've at least heard of one of those. And there is a reason why Michael Lewis's books are so frequently turned into movies. 
And it's not just because he chooses his topics well, because he does. And it's not just that he writes them like they're movies, because that is also true. But I think also a lot of it has to do with the fact that he makes people really, really come to life within his stories. Michael Lewis has this really uncanny ability. It's going to give me chills just thinking about it. I've never seen any other author be able to do this. Maybe they exist. I've never read them before. He has this ability to just get who a person is, what they're all about, and then communicate it effortlessly, flawlessly onto the page, where you as the reader then just get what that person is about. And more than that, you, because you understand them so deeply, you can just put yourself in their shoes and you can see the larger situation that Michael Lewis is choosing to focus on in that book with their eyes. And that way, a situation like the global financial crisis, which is incredibly confusing if you don't understand finance, you can see that with their eyes and therefore it's more understandable. Michael Lewis writes about big situations, but he makes them so much more about the people and it is what makes his stories so electric. Because of that, this story just seems tailor-made for someone like Michael Lewis. This situation is so huge. It's a global pandemic. It's very complicated. And it's also very confusing, especially a year ago, which is the time period that he's writing about when he turns his attention to the COVID-19 pandemic toward the end of the book. It was so confusing living through this. I know it was for me. I'm assuming it was for everybody else when you'd hear something one day and the next day that could be completely untrue. You had to be ready to throw away your existing notions about the virus at a moment's notice. It was very, very confusing. And so this type of a situation, you can just tell that Michael Lewis knows that he had to focus on a small cast of characters. And there were a small cast of characters who were trying their best to either work with or fight against the existing system to do what they felt they needed to do because they felt that they knew what the right type of response was. And yet they were having a real devil of a time trying to get anyone to listen. You'll come away from this book not only having gone on a very wild ride, because that is very much the Michael Lewis experience, but also with just a huge amount of respect for the individuals that Lewis focuses on in this book, particularly Carter Mesher and Charity Dean. These are people who had to risk so much just to be heard. They knew that they would probably be hated, that they might get fired, that there might even be more dangerous implications. And they did it not because they were looking to enrich themselves or they were looking to become famous or become loved or respected or earn new positions. None of that. They just did it because they knew it's what was right. But you'll also walk away from this book with a much greater understanding of the fact that with our existing structures in place, all our bureaucracy and all the red tape, that it was basically inevitable that this was going to happen to us, as awful as that is to admit. If you know anything about government, big governments, local governments, any kind of government, you understand that it's extremely slow, molasses slow, and that they're very reticent to act unless something is very big, obvious in your face. Something needs to be done. Ring the alarm bell. If something is not that obvious, then they don't want to take any action. And unfortunately, when it comes to a virus, countermeasures taken early on are really the only way to do things. And governments aren't going to want to do that. They don't want to be unpopular. Government agencies also don't want to be seen making a mistake. So if they listen to experts when a new virus comes along and they close down schools or they keep workers home and then the virus ends up being nothing, that is a very unpopular move. People can lose their jobs. They can lose their funding. And so they don't want to take those early steps because what if it's nothing? When really we need to be treating every single new virus that comes along like it's a worst case scenario because this is what happens when we don't. Needless to say, this book is fascinating and the storytelling is just a dream. I don't know how he does it, but Michael Lewis turns true stories into thrillers. Like you're on the edge of your seat. You can't wait to see what's going to happen next, even though you know 
what's going to happen next. I mean, we all just lived through this. It's not like you don't know what's coming, but that's just a testament to his skill. I don't think this is the best book he's ever written, but I do think it's a really solid, rigorously informative, yet edge of your seat, exciting work of nonfiction that I personally highly recommend, especially if you're a fellow American and you too would like to better understand what just happened to all of us. But that's it for my review. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you would like to keep up with what I'm reading or writing about right now, you can find me on various places across the internet, including Goodreads and some other social media platforms. The links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. And also in that description box, there will be what I call a further reading section, where I will list titles of some books I think might interest you if you really liked this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.